Listen to me when I tell you that this girl, she really scares me. And I'm talking about Carly Gregg. Have you been following that case? Well, if you didn't, you are in for a wild ride today. And the reason why I say she scares me is because I've been watching Carly and I've been watching her going through trial and I've seen all the footage and let's just say it's really, really disturbing. But I couldn't help but notice that she sort of reminds me a little bit of a female version of Aiden Fuji. And if what she did was not disturbing enough, the how she did it and what she did afterwards is probably the thing that bothers me the most, to be honest with you. But we're gonna get into all of that today and we're gonna go into detail and I'm gonna show you all of that footage. Warning, it's really upsetting. But before we do that, welcome to Crime Rush. I'm Inga and thank you for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe and also like this video to help the channel out. Please note that this content is intended for mature audiences only and I get all my information from public sources. You can very easily do the same and form your own opinion. Fourteen-year-old Carly Madison Gregg lived in Rankin County, Mississippi in the USA. She lived with her mom, 40-year-old Ashley Smiley, and her stepdad, 38-year-old Heath Smiley. Carly's mom, Ashley, was a geometry teacher at Northwest Rankin High School, and Carly also attended the same school. My research keeps on pointing to the fact that Ashley Smiley was one of those teachers that everybody just loved. She, You know, that teacher that all the students want to be in her class? Well, it sounds like she was like that. And at the same time, Carly was an incredible student. She was so, so intelligent that she actually skipped the fourth grade and she was known to be quite a good girl until she wasn't. So when Carly started rebelling, she was caught doing some pretty disturbing things. Not only was she selling, but she was caught with a knife at school in her pocket and she was caught cheating. But it would also come out later that Carly was reportedly also living a bit of a double life. She had many secrets. She was reportedly getting involved with substances such as shrooms and the green stuff and the white stuff that you put up your nose. She also reportedly had a secret boyfriend and secret phones. But even though all of that stuff is obviously not good, I would say it's really not that uncommon amongst teens these days. But what is uncommon is what Carly would do next. On the 19th of March, 2024, Ashley rode to school with her mom, Ashley Smiley, and a friend. Now, reportedly, Ashley snapped that morning and she cursed at her friend and they had some sort of argument and she was screaming at him, but this disturbed her friend. In fact, it upset him so much and he was so worried about Carly that he decided to go to her mom, Ashley Smiley, who was a teacher at the school, like I said, and he went to her and told her all of Carly's secrets. He was telling her what she was hiding, that she was vaping, that she had the secret boyfriend, the phones, all of it. He just let it all out. Now we can only assume that the ride home after school was unpleasant to say the least. I don't know what was said, nobody knows. I don't know if they had an argument. Perhaps Ashley just said to Carly that she knew about everything because what takes place next is like, mind-blowing. When Ashley and Carly get home, it is believed that Ashley immediately went to Carly's room to look for all the stuff that she was hiding from her. Now, I can imagine that any teen would not like this or not enjoy this at all, but most of them would not react the way that Carly did. And here's another trigger warning for you because from here on out, things get extremely disturbing. While Ashley is looking through the things in Carly's room, Carly takes a gun, and she goes and her mom three times. 
and later attempts to do the same thing to her stepdad. Now, absolutely shocking, but the details within the story will shock you. So on this day, security cameras that were already set up inside the home, I think it was set up inside the kitchen, caught a lot of what happened on camera. On the footage, you can see Carly enter the home with her two golden retrievers. At this moment, we know that Ashley, her mom, was already in her room looking through everything. So in the footage, you see Carly head in. She's got something behind her back. She then disappears into the passage and obviously heads to the room. And you can actually hear how this teen shits her own mother. Carly then goes into the kitchen, grabs her mom's phone and sends a text message to her stepdad saying, what time will you be home, honey? She also does a bit of singing and then tells the dogs that everything will be okay. I'm going to play the footage for you now, but please be aware that this is extremely disturbing and upsetting. It really upset me to see this. And I also feel incredibly sorry for those dogs because they look so stressed out. They don't know what's going on, but you can hear the screaming. You can hear the shots. So please, you have been warned. This is incredibly upsetting. Now, if that didn't give you the chills, I honestly don't know what will. But the fact that she goes and jumps on her mom's phone and sends the stepdad a text saying, what time will you be home, honey? I was like, that, that scares me. How can a young girl like that be so, so evil? But then get this. She goes and she takes the camera and she places it in the fridge. Then she goes onto her own phone, texts a bunch of her friends, tries to phone them, tells them that there's an emergency, that she needs help. And one of those friends actually come over to the house. When the friend arrives to the house, Carly asks her if she is squeamish around dead bodies. She then goes and takes this friend and shows her her mom's dead body lying on the floor. But I'm not done because while she's showing her friend, her mom on the floor, she says, I put three in her and I've got three more for my stepdad. Carly then tells the friend to go and wait in the backyard because her stepdad was gonna be home anytime and she was going to, you know, do what she wanted to do. And the friend actually, I have questions about this because the friend actually listens 
she goes into the backyard and i know these are teens and she might have been scared because she just saw a dead body and also like maybe she was scared of carly i mean uh, <laughs> she scares me but i was just wondering why did this friend go and do what she said why didn't she like jump over the fence and call a neighbor or someone to help you know i'm not judging i don't know what happened there but those are the questions i have for that situation so then carly's stepdad heath smiley arrives at home and as he walks in the door carly fires at him and he instantly tries to wrestle the gun from her so he quickly jumped on her he managed to get the gun away but she managed to shoot him through the shoulder then carly takes off she runs through the back door she jumps over the fence and she runs one direction and her friend who was waiting in the backyard runs another direction and some of this was also caught on camera by the way and i'm going to share that with you now just be warned this is also pretty upsetting It's absolutely shocking and just unimaginable. But next, I'm going to play the 911 call that Heath Smiley made after Carly attacked him. And in this clip, you will also be seeing Carly listening to this 911 call in court while she was on trial. Where's the 
That's so, so devastating. I mean, put yourself in this man's shoes. He's been working all day. He comes home. It seems like a normal day. He walks in the door. He's attacked by a stepdaughter. And then he realizes that his wife is dead on the floor. I mean, who would even expect that? I mean, it is insane. But police eventually locate Carly and they immediately arrested her. She actually asks in that body cam footage if her stepdad is okay. And I was like, this girl, I don't know. And you can see she is a little bit stressed out. But to me, she seems pretty calm if you consider what she just did. I would not look like that after I had done something like she did. Now, one thing that you should know is that a week before the tragedy took place, Carly's prescribed antidepressant was switched out by her doctor but apparently she did get the directions that she had to wean herself off and she was also in therapy because her mom recognized at one point that Carly was struggling in life and it just seems to me like her mom was really trying her best to just get Carly the help that she needed and to be a good mom to her. Oh and something that I forgot to mention earlier when I was talking about Carly her bio dad is somewhat in the picture, but it sounds like he's got some substance abuse issues and that he also has some mental health issues. And it also sounds like Ashley and Carly's bio dad were sort of back and forth and fighting over visitation rights and just a bunch of things concerning when he could see Carly because it sounds like this man had quite a few issues on his plate. So Carly was charged with murder and attempted murder and was charged as an adult. However, the state offered a plea deal where she would have to spend 40 years behind bars for her crime, but she rejected it. And she endured a week long trial where she pleaded not guilty due to insanity. And we're gonna go over parts of the trial that I found interesting because I wanna talk to you about it. But I think we can all agree that to be capable of doing something like that, there probably has to be something wrong with you to some degree, right? But to plead not guilty due to insanity, you have to be able to prove that you didn't know right from wrong in the moment that you committed the crime. And I just don't believe that in this case. I think Carly knew exactly what she was doing. Think about it for a moment. She hid the gun behind her back so the camera wouldn't pick it up. She then took the camera and hid it in the fridge, okay? Then she she also texts her stepdad after she talks her mom and says, what time will you be home, honey? That scares me. I mean, who does that? That's some planning going in there. She then attacks the stepdad. She's got a friend over, shows her friend, her mom that she just murdered. I mean, 
You cannot convince me that this girl didn't know what she was doing. You cannot convince me that she didn't know right from wrong in the time that she did it because then why hide the camera? Why hide the weapon behind your back? I mean, she knew. But let's jump into parts of the trial and I actually want to show you the opening statements and we're going to start off with the prosecutor's opening statements. This is a case about Carly Madison Gregg. Carly Gregg has been charged with murdering her mother, Ashley Smiley, and attempting to murder her stepfather, Heath Smiley. She's also been charged with tampering with physical evidence for removing a camera and hiding it that captured a portion of the events. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear testimony throughout the next few days during this case. You'll hear about some secret life that Carly lived. You'll hear that Carly had a secret boyfriend. You'll hear that Carly had a secret iPod, that she had secret social media accounts that she was using to communicate with people on this iPod when her parents had taken her phone away. You'll hear that she was secretly cutting on her thigh using a, a knife. You'll hear that she secretly had burner phones, phones her mom and stepdad didn't know about that she was using. You'll hear that she had secret weed vape pens and that she before going to school at times. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not why we're here though. We're here because of what she did on March the 19th, 2024. So that you'll hear that Carly is the daughter of Ashley Smiley, the stepdaughter of Heath Smiley, that Heath and Ashley were married sometime in 2022. I'm sorry, 2020. You'll hear that Carly's, Carly's Bible not been in her life for about a year or more, that he was a known drug user, had violent and angry tendencies. You'll hear that back in January, Carly got in trouble with her parents when they found this iPod, that they got onto her for, for using these secret accounts and for communicating with people. You'll hear that around the same time that she had this boyfriend they found out about and that they asked her to break up with him and that later uh, they found out she was still seeing this boy. You'll hear at some point that Carly got in trouble uh, at school. She was cheating. She'd found the answers to a test and, and gave them to the other students. You'll hear that all of this was happening about the same time that they found out Carly was cutting on her legs. You'll hear that as a concerned parent, what they did was they got Carly in therapy. She was being treated for anxiety and stress. You'll hear that she continued smoking those vape pens, even after in therapy. So now, now I want to take you to the real reason we're here and what you'll hear. We're here because on March the 19th, 2024, Carly rode to school with her mother that day. Ashley was a school teacher at Northwest Rankin, taught geometry. Carly was in the 10th grade. You'll hear that that morning, she got in a little altercation with one of her friends, cussed him out. But what you'll hear, ladies and gentlemen, from the, from the testimony of this, this friend is that he was so worried, so worried about Carly's use of smoking marijuana and so worried about her being high and so worried about her having these burner phones that her mom didn't know about that he felt, he felt compelled to tell Miss Ashley Smiley that day. Ladies and gentlemen, after the incident with Carly that morning, he, you'll hear that, that he gets in touch with another friend and he's like, hey, you got to keep her distracted so I can go tell Miss Smiley what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this friend cared about Carly. He was like, I, I got to I gotta intervene. I got to tell her. I'm afraid of what's happening. You'll hear from him that he did, in fact, tell Miss Smiley. That after fourth block that day, he goes and he tells Miss Smiley, hey, hey, Carly has got these vapes. She's got this phone. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear then that Carly Gregg rides in the car home with her mother from school to their house. They leave school sometime after 3.30. They get home a little before 4. You'll hear that when they get inside the house, it's only their two dogs, Ashley Smiley and Carly Gregg. Immediately, Carly goes and lets the dogs out. You'll hear testimony that Ashley then goes into Carly's room. 
you'll hear that while Ashley is in her room, that Carly's still outside. At some point, Ashley finds uh, what law enforcement believe to be the four boxes that contain vape pens. Testimony will be that we believe she carried them from Carly's room to her bedroom, went back to search in Carly's room. The evidence will show that almost immediately upon Carly coming inside the house, that she walks straight to her parents' goes straight to her mom's side of the bed and removes a 357 Magnum from under the mattress. We believe the testimony will be that then she concealed that 357 Magnum behind her back as she walked through the kitchen. She peeks her head around. We believe the testimony will show that she peeks her head around the kitchen to make sure that her mom hasn't come out of her bedroom. We believe the evidence will then show that she walked with that 357 Magnum behind her back, walked in to her own bedroom, and then three, fired three shots into her mother, killing her. We believe the testimony will then be that that very moment after she shot and killed her mother, she then hides that gun back out of the camera, walks back into that kitchen, sits down on the stool with the gun behind her, picks up her mother's cell phone, puts her mom's passcode into the phone. We believe the testimony will be that then she texts her stepdad and said something to the effect of, when will you be home, honey? Testimony will be that then she waited for him to respond. I'll be a little bit longer. She sends him a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe the testimony will then be that after she puts the phone back down and walks out of sight with the camera, that between the next 45 minutes or so, that the defendant reaches out to or attempts to reach out to about five or six of her friends. Some were FaceTime, some were text messages. We believe the evidence will show that during this time she was asking them all for help, trying to get them to come over to her house. She wouldn't tell them why. We believe that one of them's going to say he even offered to call 911 and she told him no. The evidence will also be that one of these friends did in fact come over to help Carly that day. She didn't know why, but she knew that her friend needed help and she went to that home. We believe the evidence will show that when that friend arrived at Carly's house, that Carly walked to the front door, asked her, are you squeamish around dead bodies? We believe the evidence will show that then she took that friend and showed her her dead mother laying on the floor. We believe the evidence will show that after that, she says, I put three in my mom, and I got three more waiting for my stepdad when he gets home. We believe the evidence will show that then she tells this friend, hey, why don't you go wait outside in the backyard? My stepdad's about to be home. This friend will testify that she does go in the backyard and she hears gunshots. And the next thing she sees is Carly coming out of the back door. We believe the testimony will be that she fell out of the back, she fell down coming out of the back door, gets up and tells her to run. And these two individuals, this friend and Carly, jump over the fence and run separate directions. You'll hear testimony uh, that there was a 911 call. You'll hear a frantic Heath Smiley telling the dispatcher. Oh my God, she's killed her mother. She hit me in the neck, it grazed me. She tried to kill me too. She's run off. You'll hear from law enforcement when they arrived on the scene that Carly Gregg had fled the scene. You'll hear from law enforcement that when they arrived on the scene, Ashley Smiley was very much dead in the floor in Carly's bedroom and that they found that Heath Smiley had been shot and hit in the shoulder, a through and through. You're, you will hear from law enforcement that sometime after the day of the event, they learned that there was cameras involved, that this home had surveillance video. 
You'll learn that one of those videos was turned over by the living victim, Heath Smiley, and it shows Carly Gregg and her friend jumping over the fence. And then you'll learn that there was another camera in the house on March the 19th, 2024. Carly was hiding the gun out of sight of. And you'll hear that that camera was not in the kitchen when law enforcement got there. And it was not in the kitchen where it should have been when Heath Smiley got there. It wasn't until some time later that that camera was discovered. Ladies and gentlemen, you will hear that Ashley Smiley's cause of death go wounds to the head. Ashley Smiley's manner of death, homicide. You will hear that Heath Smiley says, Carly Gregg is the one that shot at me. And on his 911 call, he said that she tried to kill him. You'll hear him say that he did not move that camera, the only other person living in the home. Ladies and gentlemen, you also hear from forensic scientists from the Mississippi Forensics Laboratory. You'll hear that both of Carly Gregg's hands tested positive, both the right and the left. You'll hear that the 357 Magnum that was used to kill her mother and shoot her stepfather, they took swabs. They took a swab of the trigger and they took a swab of the hammer. And you'll, you will hear that the DNA profile that matches those swabs belongs to Carly Gregg. Ladies and gentlemen, you will also hear that there were two projectiles removed from Carly Gregg's mother, Ashley Smiley. One in her brain, one in her neck. Projectiles were tested with ballistics and that those projectiles matched the 357 Magnum that Heath Smiley took out of Carly Gregg's hand that day on March the 19th, 2024. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this trial, after you've heard the evidence, the state will stand before you and we will ask that you murder, attempted murder, and tampering with physical evidence. Now, when I was listening to the prosecutor's opening statement, I really thought to myself, you know, all she did was go through everything as it happened step by step. She really didn't need to add anything to her story. She could literally just lay out the facts for the jury to listen to. And the reason I think she did that is because she didn't need to do anything else because the evidence speaks for itself. But now let's listen to Carly's lawyer's opening statement. Good afternoon. I know it's been a long morning for you all, so I will try to do this as briefly as possible. This is not a whodunit case. We know who took action on March 19th to bring about the death of Ashley Smiley and the injuries to Heath Smiley. However, this is a why case. Why did it happen? Why did this exceptional child with no history of violence, who was loved by her friends, her teachers, her parents, who had a good home life, who loved her mother, why did she sh her mom? Why did she sh at her stepfather? The state would like you to believe the answer to those questions don't matter, but we know better than that. The answers to those questions is why we're here today, and it's what you're here to do. We believe the evidence will show that there were three victims on March 19th, Ashley Smiley, Heath Smiley, and Carly Smiley, and Carly Gregg, that they were all three victims. We believe the evidence will show that Carly had been suffering from a mental illness, that Carly was not aware on March 19th that she had a mental illness. We believe the evidence will show that Carly's parents who lived with her were not aware that illness. We believe the evidence will show that Carly's close friends who saw her at school every day were not aware that Carly was suffering from a mental illness because it's hard to look at a person and understand that they have a mental illness. It's hard to look at a person and know that they have a mental illness. That's why it's often referred to as the invisible disease. 
A person can exhibit symptoms of a mental illness without people necessarily knowing that they have one or other people necessarily knowing the person has. While the events on March 19th were tragic, the events on March 19th were not intentional. The evidence will show and the testimony will show that Carly Gregg loved her mother. That Carly Gregg and her mother had a loving, close relationship. Carly Gregg's mom loved her. In fact, her life revolved around Carly, as parents' lives often do revolve. Carly very much wanted to please her mother. Carly was an exceptional student, made a 30 on the ACT when she was 13 years old. She was the apple of her mother and her stepfather's eye. And you will understand by the conclusion of this hearing why Carly's stepfather is standing behind her. Because he knows on March 19th, there were three victims, Ashley, Heath, and Carly. The state will ask you to take your good judgment, to take your common sense, and to put it in a bucket, to put the lid on the bucket, and to toss the bucket out of this courtroom. We implore you not to do that, to retain your common sense, to retain your good judgment, and to make sure that you are listening to the evidence as it's presented because it doesn't matter how many witnesses the state puts on, their story is filled with inconsistencies because they're not telling the whole story. The evidence will not show that Carly was ever deemed dangerous by anyone. The evidence will not show that Carly ever had any desire to hurt her mother. The evidence will not show that Carly ever had any desire to hurt any person. The evidence will not show that Carly invited people over to her house to view her mom's body. What it will show is that on March 19th, a hysterical Carly called her closest friends, begging them for help, begging them to help her. The evidence will show that Carly did not recognize Heath Smiley when he got home that day. You'll hear that from him himself. The evidence will show that Carly was so terrified when Heath Smiley got home on March 19th that even after Carly left the house, Heath walked around the house with the handgun in his hand looking for an intruder because he was convinced by Carly, by how she appeared, by how she acted, he did that day, by the child he had known for years, that he was, that she was terrified, something in that house to cause that kind of terror in Carly. What the evidence will not show is that Carly had a drug problem. What the evidence will not show is that Carly and her mother had any argument on March 19th. What the evidence will not show is that Carly had any desire to hurt her stepfather. What the evidence will not show is that Ashley Smiley was angry when she left school that day. Or that Ashley Smiley was upset with Carly when she left school that day. Or that after they got home on March 19th, Ashley and Carly engaged in an argument. The evidence will not show that Ashley Smiley found anything in Carly's bedroom that would have caused an argument. The evidence 
will not show that Carly intended to hurt anyone. The evidence will not show that Carly has not grieved her mother's loss. The evidence will not show that law enforcement did their due diligence in investigating this matter. The evidence will not show that Carly was abusing or misusing prescription medication. The evidence will not show that Carly had was just a teenager who had a life that her parents didn't know everything about. That's called having a teenager and being a parent. The evidence will not show that Carly had ever tried to harm another person, had ever had a desire to hurt another person. The evidence will not show that Carly is a monster, that Carly was a difficult child, a troubled child, or a deranged child. The evidence will not show that Carly Gregg does not deserve you to return a verdict of not guilty. Now, the evidence will show that Carly had a family history of mental illness. In fact, it was well documented. The evidence will show that Carly was concerned that something was wrong with her. She wrote journal entries about it. The evidence will show that Carly was afraid she had the same mental illness that her father had. Carly, the evidence will show that Carly's mother had worried for years about Carly having the same mental illness that her father had. The evidence will show that Carly was very emotionally tied in to her mother's emotions and that Carly never wanted her mother to worry about her. The evidence will show that Carly was scared of how her mother would react to the knowledge that if Carly had, if Carly had the same mental illness that her father had. That doesn't sound like a child that doesn't love her mom. And that doesn't sound like a child who has any intention of hurting her mother. The state would like you to believe that it's normal for her to go home from school one day with their mother, who they love, and shoot her, but nothing's wrong. It was just marijuana. Or because she was on social media and her mom didn't want her on social media. But again, we ask you to retain your common sense and to retain your good judgment because we know that just doesn't make sense. And at the end of this trial, if the state's case still leaves you feeling like their version of events just doesn't make sense, then you must return a verdict of not guilty. I think the defense really did a great job there. But with everything I know and everything I have seen in this case so far, they really could not convince me. And they definitely cannot tell me that Carly is a victim. I don't agree with that. But you heard right there. And that's that her stepdad actually testified in Carly's defense. And this is where it gets a little bit weird for me, okay? So I want you to quickly listen to some of what Heath Smiley had to say when he testified in court. Particular video. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I want to talk to you about, um, tell us, tell the ladies and gentlemen, Heath, and, and I know it's probably difficult, you can take as much time as you need. Tell the ladies and gentlemen exactly what you remember about when you came home on March the 19th, 2024. Um, everything seemed pretty normal and I came on in and when I opened the door to the kitchen there, a uh, gun went off in my face before the door was, I don't know, three or four inches wide open. And um, everything 
kind of kind of went pretty fast from there. It was a blur. So. Um, I, w I want to take you back just a step. Um, yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, saw a, a bit of a video from inside your house, but just so we're clear, uh, when you say you were coming into the kitchen, I believe there's a, you pull into the garage and there's a door that leads from the garage into the home. Yes. And then there's a little laundry room area. Yes. And then there's another door kind of beside your refrigerator that leads from the laundry room into the kitchen area. Yes. Um, were you in the, were you coming in the first door or the second door when uh, the gun went off? The second door from the laundry room to the kitchen. And do you remember, um, is there anything you do every day when you come in the house? Uh, usually stop and take my shoes off there and uh, come on in and change clothes. Do you remember if you took your shoes off on March the 19th? I, I think I did, yeah. Was it unusual for that second door to be closed in your house? Sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. We would shut that door a lot of times trying to keep the sound of the washer and dryer down or trying to keep one of the dogs out of the garbage can that we had in there. So. I have to do something similar. Y'all have two uh, large dogs, right? Two golden retrievers. Um, and, and so on that day, the second door was what was closed. Yes. Um, I believe you said that you, you didn't get it open probably three or five inches uh, before it went off. Do you, what did you remember seeing, Heath? Uh, just gun flash in my face and uh, then you know, it went off two more times, but my hand was on the gun after the first shot and I twisted it from her. Uh, who who was pointing that gun at you? It was Carly. Uh, who pulled the trigger when you opened the door? The first one I know was Carly. After that, my hand was on the gun too, and I know I had a scratch on my thumb and all. I, I very well could have hit it, I know, that third time. Uh, how close, Heath, was that gun to your face when that went off? Uh, maybe a foot. Did the did you ever get struck by a bullet? Yes, uh, one of them kind of grazed right through this muscle up here. Um, can you tell, ladies and gentlemen, what uh, what did that feel like? Uh, I know this sounds weird, but I honestly have never felt it to this day. Uh, when when the when the gun went off in your face, tell, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, was your was your body in a state of shock? Uh, not at that moment. Uh, I was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, did you see anybody inside your home other than Carly? No. Walk us through, you said that you were able to at some point get the gun from her. Tell us, Heath, what is it that you remember after that? Um... Uh, she was screaming out of her, her mind, scared. Uh, it was like she had seen a demon or something. She was terrified. And my first thought was there was an intruder somewhere and she thought she was after somebody else. Um, and, and to be clear, Carly never told you that she thought somebody else was in the house, right? No, that's the feeling that I got. She was terrified out of her mind. And at that time, you did not yet know that your wife was dead, right? No, not at that time. Um, so, so Carly's scared. She's screaming when she shoots at you. Um, how many shots went off from that gun? At that time, there was three. So you could hear Heath saying there that when he saw Carly, she was terrified in that moment. She looked like she had seen a demon. But I was wondering, perhaps she did look terrified, you know, perhaps she looked scared out of her mind. But could it be that she was scared because it didn't go the way she planned it to go? She maybe thought, hey, how's this guy going to retaliate after I...
him is he not going to hurt me maybe that's why she was scared and i really feel for this man heath smiley after everything he went through i mean it's extremely traumatic but i wonder if he's not maybe just maybe trying to honor his late wife by standing up for Carly, her daughter, even after everything she has done. Now, I'm not going to add more of his testimony because as you can hear, he's a bit long winded and it, it takes so long and, and it can get quite boring. So I'm going to share with you what he said uh, for the most part. And I'm paraphrasing, by the way, but he mentions there that he always had a really good relationship with Carly. They got, got on extremely well. There weren't any problems between him and Carly. But there was something that caught my eye throughout the trial and it was just bits and pieces of it. It was something that I picked up and it was just weird to me. But I found it strange the way they looked at each other and the way they smiled at each other. And maybe it's not that weird. Maybe he was trying to encourage her or give her some hope by smiling at her. But it was a weird exchange for me to witness. And I don't want to start any conspiracy theories because I don't think he had anything to do with it. But I'm just saying I found it to be a little bit odd. At one point in his testimony, the stepdad also talks about when Carly was caught cheating at school and he's talking also about Carly's explanation for it why she did what she did what she said about it and he goes on to say that she said she was getting so tired of other kids coming up to her asking her for help with their work with their homework and stuff that she went up and she found the answers and she took a photo of it and she just handed it out to everyone okay now first off and this is just my opinion. I'm just speculating here, so don't quote me on this. But I think this little girl had everybody fooled. She was giving off vibes of being like the sweet little angel. And we know she was rebelling towards the end. But I think that she was hiding something for much longer than what the mom thought she was. And I think that she had everybody convinced that she was, let's say normal but in fact there was something going on behind the scenes there and that makes her very different from Aiden Fucci because Aiden is the type of teen that you look at and instantly you can tell that everything's not okay with this teen. Carly's different and that's why she scares me. She will look like a sweet little angel that'll never hurt a fly and who's doing so well at school and she's doing all of these things but meanwhile She's got something going on behind the scenes there. Let's just say that. And listen, let me say this. I don't like to say that any child is evil. But with the things I've seen, and I guess all of you guys now too, we can't deny that some people on this earth just, they are evil. There's something wrong. And sometimes that is created through circumstances in life. And then I've come across people that... I don't know it just seems like there's just something there that makes them evil and I don't know I, I don't know what the school's true story is is it mental health I don't know it could very well be we do know that she had some issues with it before but she definitely knew what she was doing while she was doing it she knew right from wrong that we know Another thing that I picked up throughout the trial was how either her defense or her grandparents who were there supporting her, how they dressed Carly up for the trial. And she was wearing all little preppy things. Let me put up a few photos for you to look at here. I mean, look at those outfits. It just makes her look like this tiny, innocent, little angel faced little girl that could do no wrong. But meanwhile, this is a young lady a young lady, not a little girl, who sh her mom three times. She murdered her mom. And if you look at the footage of the day that she did it, it doesn't look like that's her style. Not at all. I'm willing to bet that they did that on purpose. And I get it. We, we've seen it before. And I get why they do that. But I'm just saying it's not fooling me. So basically, this is how I feel about it. Carly, to me, seems like a master manipulator. I think she had everybody fooled. Everybody thought she was one way when she was another. And that's just my opinion. You can, I'm not going to argue with you. If you have a different opinion, I could be wrong. I don't know these people. But when I was watching her throughout the trial, the way she reacted to things, the moment she cried, there was something about it 
and you you can go and watch that on YouTube. A lot of the trial is on there for you to see. I don't know. There was something about it that didn't sit right with me. And if you just consider the way she went about everything before and afterwards, that should tell you enough there. That scares me. It scares me what she did there because that tells me that whether it's due to mental illness or not, this is not a person that should be out with the rest of society. I feel like she would be a danger either to herself or definitely to people around her. I would not trust her. And it seems like the jury agreed with me because they sentenced Carly to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Your sentences will be as follows. As to count one, the jury having fixed the verdict at life imprisonment, this court will sentence you to life imprisonment. As to count two, you'll be sentenced to life imprisonment. As to count three, you'll be sentenced to 10 years to serve. You'll be required to pay court cost fees and assessments in the amount of $431.50. Ms. Gray, regarding any appeal of your judgment and conviction in order of sentence and in accordance with Wright versus State 577, Southern 2nd 387, the court wants to inform you that pursuant to Rule 4E of the Mississippi Rules of Appellate Procedure, the notice of appeal required by Rule 3 of such rules shall be filed with the circuit clerk within 30 days after the date of the denial of any motion for a new trial or the date of imposition of sentence, whichever is later. Pursuant to Rule 4E, if you make a timely motion under the Mississippi Rules of Criminal Procedure for a judgment of acquittal notwithstanding the verdict of the jury or for a new trial under Rule 25.1, the time for appeal shall run from the entry of the order denying such motion. Finally, Rule 25.1 subsection C provides that a motion for a new trial must be made within 10 days of entry of the judgment, which includes both adjudication of guilt and sentence. Should you make a decision on the record to appeal, that decision will stand unless a written statement to the contrary signed by you and your attorney is filed with the court. Should you make a decision to waive appeal, that decision will stand unless you give written notice to the court and your attorney prior to expiration of the time in which to perfect an appeal. Now it is so, so sad. It's never fun to see such a young person being capable of something so evil, but also not fun to see them go to prison, especially when they've been charged as an adult. That is, I mean, the thoughts that go through my mind, it's, it's very disturbing. But do I think she deserves it? Unfortunately, I do. And you can see the stepdad is devastated in the clip that I shared there. And also her grandparents who were present throughout the trial, I think they really thought that she was going to go home. I mean, with them, because she probably would have gone to live with them. And then I'm thinking, these grandparents are brave because I would be sleeping with both eyes open if that little girl came to stay with me. I mean, really, I would be scared at night. I mean, imagine waking up with her standing over you. I wouldn't trust her. But that's not even the end, folks, because listen to this. Now to our top story this morning. Convicted killer Carly Gregg could get a new trial as her defense team is filing a motion for a brand new trial for her. This is coming less than two weeks since the judge sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole for murdering her mother and trying to murder her stepfather. Now, the defense is claiming in their motion that new evidence has been discovered that was unavailable during the trial, including an unaired portion of an interview that Carly's biological father, Kevin Gregg, did with TV station WLBT. He says that Carly was placed in equestrian therapy as a young child due to experiencing auditory hallucinations. Kevin Gregg refused to cooperate in Carly's defense, refused to talk to the state, and refused to talk to the mental health professionals who were evaluating his daughter. Uh, so not a lot of help he was, uh, but now her defense team has learned this information after the fact that she was hearing voices, and that of course could go to her mental state at the time of the incident. Let's talk about what this means with. They want a new trial for Carly because they say they have new evidence. And listen, they might have all this new evidence but I just can't see what they can show us that can convince me at least that this girl didn't know what she was doing at the time she could have been having hallucinations and all of what they are saying that might be true but that doesn't solve the the 
problem that we have on the footage there what we witness definitely not I don't know that's just my opinion but let me know what you think about it what do you think about Carly what did you think about the trial the stepdad and the sentence and what do you think about this new evidence they want to bring in now do you think it's going to change anything let me know down below other than that I want to thank you so much for tuning in and for all the support it really means the world to me Make sure you stay safe and I will see you in the next one.